Namaste. If there's anyone out there, <laughs> any one being, Namaste. <laughs> so, uh, the adventure of lust for Korean lemon chicken. There's a Korean restaurant near Lehel where I rather frequently met my girlfriend of the time. And uh, for lunch after something maybe uh, psychotherapy or something our in any case back in the days when I was more much more <laughs> than now which I don't at all do following her around and uh, being with in any case I loved that, and maybe still will, lemon chicken that the proprietress cooked up and quasi-jokingly I told her, told her I guess, or asked her, please uh, give me a little extra. <laughs> I may have patted my my overhanging belly uh, in saying this. In any case, she was is probably still <laughs> a very lovely lady, and uh, I really enjoyed that. So, being too lazy to get up and go to Lay Hill, who even knows if it's still there, but. It's walking a lot, you know, maybe 500 meters or so. Oh, well. So, I hit upon the notion I will try to synthesize my own. <laughs> well, I uh, net searched, web searched for recipes and videos and Chinese uh, lemon chicken and compared and matched and what looked like the most authentic had two ingredients that I don't have and could never get. Some kind of ginger, garlic, uh, chili paste. It's got a name, I think. And uh, oh, another one I think is mostly green chilies or something that does have a peculiar name like Mojumbo or something. <laughs> it's not, that's not it, but anyway. So, mishing and mashing between the recipes and using my own uh, pseudo-intelligence. I've made a, I bought, after this idea occurred, of course, I bought a package of two strips of chicken breast, one of which I cut up into pieces and treated according to my <laughs> hope, my hoped uh, for version of of Korean lemon chicken. Uh, well, <laughs> nothing like it. Nothing. Not at all. Not at all. But I've 
eaten most. There's like maybe four pieces of chicken left in the pot with the sauce that has Herner Brewer from the jar with uh, ginger and garlic and I don't know what else. Probably black pepper. Oh, and uh, sliced up green chili-like peppers, but they're not really chilies. They're a slightly, some of them I guess are slightly hot. They're from Espanian, Espanian, Spain. Anyway, one euro nine for a box of these. Oh, and Frühling Zwiebeln. Um, baby onions, the green things. <laughs> scallions, we called them when I was a child. Scallions. Gotta have those little sliced up scallions. I thought of getting sesame seeds too, but I forgot that, or I scanned the shelves at the penny, which is the close by, where I had seen these green possibly chili-like things a uh, day or two before. Anyway, I bought that stuff and uh, just a couple more things, so I was only lightly loaded instead of 12 or 15 kilos, as is usually my, <laughs> my burden. And I think, uh, uh, well, you know, it would be good for this body if I walked more. And if I walked more often to the store, each time I could bring home a lightly loaded pack, couldn't I? Oh. <laughs> Ding. Enlightenment. Ah, uh, enlightenment. No problem. <laughs> but we are problem creators and problem solvers. We aspects of the mental apparatus of this body mind instrument. <laughs> Incredible that we are star stuff. <sighs> Beginning with hydrogen, producing star stuff, the big ones explode and die. Well, they all die in some sense or another. Which makes possible solid planets and solid planets with water. Such a common, I mean, really. Very stable stuff, very simple stuff, very interesting behaviors, change of temperature near freezing, the density decreases with decreasing temperature, not the other way around, not the normal way, not the way that it happens up until 4 degrees or down until 4 degrees centigrade then uh, at four and cooler the water gets lighter and therefore ice forms on top not on the bottom which kinda helps <laughs> 
if you're trying to live in the water anyway. Water is a very many splendored thing. Not all, not, not all of those potential splendors that uh, people who wear tin hats ascribe to it. With memory and so forth. Well, maybe so. I don't think so. There's too much scrambling going on. Molecular scrambling. <laughs> Liquids don't hold patterns for long. Minds do. <laughs> Minds hold patterns very long. Sometimes. is a pattern. It's an assemblage of stuff. Or a shape of stuff. One of the basic equipments of mind is discrimination. Um, I just forgot what I was going to say. Comparison. Similarity and difference. Similarity underlies concepts. Similarity of um, events. Similarity of perceptions. creates categories. And even naming. With naming, they can expand. They can expand uh, beyond one cranium. Communication, speech, words, encoding information, encoding information for transmission. Sphere. <laughs> An interesting journey, let us say, from hydrogen through stars into planets. Energy or entropy. I get confused a little, but energy flow from a star and from leftover heat in the planet and water. S liquid phase. <laughs> I mean, water is a very interesting thing itself, but conceivably 
life, so to speak, might form in liquid ammonia or liquid methane or <laughs> liquid lava. <laughs> But we haven't seen that happen. At first it's only plants or proto, <laughs> proto life. Uh, You know, like rocket rockets need fuel and oxidizer. So do animals. <laughs> so Yeah, predation, uh, well, yeah, it may not have occurred. Predation may not have, well, <laughs> there's oxygen, there's water, and there's life. Life. What is life? Well, it's uh, perhaps more than anything copying. It's more than it's more than copying, but it's. It's copying with a purpose. The purpose is staying alive. That's the only purpose there is. Staying alive. All other purposes are children or grandchildren or great-grandchildren of staying alive. <laughs> it is the purpose. One TED Talk worth 18 minutes <laughs> only. I don't know that it's worth anything. I'll be very curious to see what I've done.